good evening. It's wonderful to have all of you joining us today um, online, on Facebook, and on YouTube. A couple of announcements to remind everybody. Um, if you have not picked up your um, packet for the congregational meeting, which will be held between services on March 7th, um, it will be going out in the mail tomorrow. So make sure to look for it in the mail tomorrow um, is when we'll be putting them in. So um, should be there within the next week. Um, also, I wanted to remind everybody that we do have a congregational meeting. It's going to be between services here at the church. Um, you'll be able to um, participate here in worship. Um, or, and if you don't feel safe enough to participate in that way, make sure you submit your questions to um, Mona and, um, or myself, and we'll make sure that they're addressed during the meeting itself. And we'll also have a audio feed out to, it will be audio only, we can't bring in questions from the parking lot, but if you don't feel safe coming into the church, you can call into a number and you'll be able to hear what's happening in the congregational meeting to know what the answers to the questions were. Um, the, over the next um, several weeks, we'll be having our Roman in the Rona series going on during midweek Lenten services. Um, that will be online only, so make sure to join us. And um, as part of that, I'll be actually literally roaming around. Um, there's going to be some different places and things that are going to be featured into the series um, as well. I believe Graham's going to be bouncing around and um, showcasing some other places that he's been as well. So as well as looking into the Book of Romans, we, we hope that you'll help us explore the different ways in which we interact with our mission as Zion during this time. Um, without any further delay, let us go ahead and prepare our hearts for worship with the prelude.
have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash, Wash me through and through from, from my, my wickedness, wickedness and, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against, Against you only have I sinned, sinned and done, done what is, is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your, in your judgment. judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, Indeed you delight in truth deep within me, and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my weaknesses. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For, For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart, O God you will not despise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, you, you hate, hate nothing you have made, and you forgive us the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us a new and honest heart, so that truly repenting from our sins, we, we may receive from you, from you the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Joel, the second chapter. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains. A great and powerful army comes. They like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rent your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not return or relent and leave a blessing behind him 
a green offering and a drink offering from the Lord, your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants, infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord's, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. We entreat you on behalf of Christ. He be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, An acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended others in every way, through great endurance in afflictions, hardness, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and from the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well-known, as dying and see. We are alive and punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory Glory to to you, O Lord. Lord. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound the trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door. Pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. 
And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consume and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Is it just me, or does anyone else see the irony and tension between our gospel lesson for today and the fact that it falls on Ash Wednesday? I mean, think about it. In our scripture for today, we hear, Do not flaunt your piety. Pray in secret. Do not store up treasures on earth. And even don't disfigure your face. On the same day when we walk out of here with a big black smudge on our faces. Literally picking up the physical sign of grief and mourning with the ashes and mingled with the sign of death on the cross. At the same time, hearing in the scripture, do not disfigure your faces and make it known that you are in pain. On my first Ash Wednesday as a student in ministry, I was serving at a Mission Start congregation. I can't tell you the name of it because it's one of those words you're not allowed to say in Lent. But they typically met in a school cafeteria called Scottish Corners. But due to the school schedule and parent-teacher conferences, we couldn't meet in the cafeteria that day. So we went to a park, one of the recreational buildings at the park where it was open, and we met inside there with our guitars and our music stands. Due to the constraints of the worship space, the imposition of ashes was not a walk up the aisle and get the cross marked on your forehead. Instead, everyone had to do the ashes on one another. And so we had to pass this container of ashes around the circle. It came to two of my confirmation students, both middle school students, both young girls, sitting next to each other enjoying the worship, who had never encountered an element in which they knew was holy. Never encountered holding the elements themselves in worship. The box of ashes had been passed to them, and they both looked down and immediately started giggling. It was not a sinister giggle or a giggle of joy or humor, but that nervous giggle that teenage girls always get that told everyone in the room that they did fully grasp what they held in their hands, and what it really meant. They knew that these ashes were the palms we used the the year before to welcome our Lord and Savior into Jerusalem last year, mixed with the same oil that marks the sign of the cross and seals them with the Holy Spirit at their baptism symbolizing the beginning and the end, the fullness of the promises made at their baptism. Though we are dust, and to dust we shall return. It also reminds us that we are bound to the death these ashes mark through the oil that is intermingled with them. 
those students giggled with nerves because for the first time in their life, they were welcomed into the act of sharing what they knew, what they had learned about Christ in their studies, and that they got to share it with their best friend. And it made them excited and nervous all at the same time. We often forget that this rite of the imposition of ashes is not about showing off our piety, as I've seen some pastors and churches try to make it out to be. Oh, they didn't get their ashes, they're not a good Christian. But this is an act of sharing the truth we know in a physical way. Not to get praise or reward, but to make, our, to make the mark of our baptisms visible once again. Making it become that constant reminder of the bitterness of death that we are bound to. And the fullness of the grace we have already received. It makes that mark visible. It makes you conscious of it as you feel the ashes sitting in the creases of your forehead as you raise your eyebrows and move. The smudge on your face that sometimes even drips into our eyes, it doesn't mark us as better than anyone else but as more in need of the grace that we have received than anyone else. Because we're here, we know, we've studied, and we know better, and yet we still fall short in sin. As we enter this time of reflection and introspection, this time of 40 days in journey, We begin to look in hope for the fullness of the inbreaking of God's eternal reign, found in the hope of the resurrection, found in the promise of the empty cross. And it's for that I say, thanks be to God. Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. 
we begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy and communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, from our neighbors, and from creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from lo love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving, and works of love. Strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament, let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. At this time, I invite you to either be, to kneel or remain seated. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven and that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have forgotten others as we have, we have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have, have mercy, mercy on, on us, us O oh God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, us O God. God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, us O God. God. Our self-indulgent appetites, and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have, Have mercy, mercy on o us, God. O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship, our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have, Have mercy, mercy on, on us, O God. God our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have, Have mercy, mercy on, on us, O oh God. God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have, Have mercy, mercy on, on us, O oh God. God our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after, after us, we confess to you. Have, Have mercy, mercy on, on us, us O God. God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, Hear us o, o God, for, for your, your mercy, mercy is great. great.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh God, you call your church to be ministers of reconciliation throughout the world. Inspire your church in its proclamation of the gospel and guide its ministries to build up the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O oh God, you create the earth and all its inhabitants, and you declare that it is good. Protect mountains and valleys, animals and plants, and direct us to be good stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. O oh God, you desire peace. Direct governments and leaders to work for the well-being of all people and raise up advocates to speak and serve on behalf of the downtrodden. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are our hope in the midst of despair, our help in the midst of sorrow, and our consolation in the midst of affliction. Grant comfort to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and support caregivers who attend all in need. Especially this day, we lift up to you Mabel Kinder, Jean Eitzel, Carol Heitzman, Connie Lynch, Mary Lou Smith, Richard Waters, Gary Lehman, Karen and Jason Owens, Ellen Kukuk, Susan Atkinson, Mike Carey, Carlos Witt, Ken Fielder, Linda Back, Karen Kovach, Nesta and Victoria, Dave Powell, Rich Evans, Rhonda Locklear, the family of Joan Witt, and the family of Viola Treadway. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O oh God, you are love, and you call us to love one another. Accompany with your grace those journeying toward baptism, and call us all to repentance. As, you, as we prepare to celebrate Christ's death and resurrection, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O oh God, you are our life and our salvation. We give you thanks for the righteous who have died in faith. Inspire us by their example and proclaim your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. During this time of instrumental offering, I invite you to take the time to prepare your offerings to be sent to the church um, as we continue to reach out and support those in need in our community.
Let us pray. Faithful God, you, you walk, walk beside, beside us in desert, desert places, and you meet us in our hunger, hunger with bread, bread from, from heaven. heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive God's blessing. You are what God made you to be created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Amen. Because God first loves us, let us depart in peace to follow, follow Jesus' footsteps, footsteps by, by inviting, inviting others to experience God's love. love. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.